Yes. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you for this opportunity uh, to be a speaker at your club. And uh, I'm really glad that we, uh, we will collaborate in the future as well. And I would like to share a few career opportunities and uh, say a few words about the Project Management Institute, about the Georgian chapter. So I will share the presentation. After the presentation, uh, please feel free to ask the questions in the chat section and uh, I will try to answer all of them. So, uh, Let's get started. So the topic of today's uh, discussion is career opportunities in project management. So my name is Lela Machaidze. I am a founder and president of the Project Management Institute Tbilisi Georgia chapter. Uh, chapter is a relatively new chapter. It was founded uh, in 2018 and is completely volunteer based. So I will say a couple of words about the chapter. So uh, PMI Institute, Project Management Institute is a global organization and it has right now 600 members. Uh, in addition, it has more than 106,000 certification holders and it is represented in 214 countries and territories. It has 310 chapters, and I'm proud that the Georgia chapter is one of them. It has 14 volunteers, and more than 100 global organizations are represented. So uh, Georgia is a part of this big family. Uh, Actually, this is the Georgia chapter, uh, one of the uh, annual conferences in Tbilisi and all the participants and PMP holders uh, from Georgia. Actually, initially we applied to become a chapter in 2014. And uh, since uh, then, finally, we obtained the official status of the chapter in 2018. It was a long way of uh, getting approvals on the business plan, uh, getting uh, board members on board, uh, and uh, different uh, uh, procedures to accomplish different procedures. Right now we have 72 members and 61, or 61 volunteers. So uh, to give you more understanding, all the members are members of the bigger family of PMI. And also they are member of the uh, local chapter. Some of them, not all of them, but some of them are certification holders and uh, they also contribute uh, to the community. Uh, besides that, we have volunteers, pool of volunteers. Uh, mainly they are either experienced project managers or students and those who seek to get some qualification or some practice in project management. So right now we have 61 volunteers uh, helping us with the projects uh, we implement for increasing awareness and the role of the project manager in Georgia. So I would like to present you the board of directors. Uh, we have uh, right now uh, five board members, uh, myself, Tamar Majavariani, communication and marketing director, George Begiashvili, finance director, and recently elected uh, director of academic outreach and uh, uh, education, George Lobzhanidze and Kesaria Tohadze, who is responsible and leads the membership and volunteer uh, direction. 
So actually, this is, uh, I thought that it will be interesting for you to learn the, how many PMP holders do we have right now in country. So I gave you a little bit of the statistics, how the number of PMPs has risen. Actually, you can notice that from 2017, there is a pretty big increase in number of PMP holders. PMP stands for Project Management Professional. This is one of the recognized uh, certifications for project managers all over the world. And uh, it is a globally recognized um, professional certification. And I'm really proud that we have this number. And uh, if we will compare with the big, uh, bigger countries like Kazakhstan and like Ukraine, we have uh, a more per ratio uh, PMP holder than those countries if we compare the scale of our countries and population. So right now we have 130 project manager uh, management professionals in country. Uh, 2020, the pandemic year was pretty interesting and uh, we have the biggest increase, 27 more PMP holders. Uh, so um, the year of 2021 has not ended yet, and I hope we will have more PMPs joining our club. Uh, this is the number of the PMP uh, of the chapter um, members. The number has actually increased in 2019. Then we have a drop in 2020. And I also recognize this is the pattern of the COVID and pandemic uh, in, in country, but it, it is increasing right now. And I hope it will increase in the future too. So um, uh, where we have uh, PMPs actually working mainly in Georgia. This is probably the topic that uh, you are interested in and which sectors they are representing. So the numbering and sequence is per the, the PMPs working in those sectors. So the biggest number of PMPs are working in the financial services. So they are mainly in the banks or microfinance organizations or different financial institutions. The second largest for the PMP holders is IT sector. The third, it is very interesting, uh, is a construction, construction sector and uh, more PMPs for the last three, four years are coming, PMP holders, project management professionals are coming uh, from construction sector. The next in the row is the telecom, healthcare, energy, government and manufacturing. Actually, the last two, we only have a couple representatives from the manufacturing and government sector. So we, uh, you can say the top three uh, sectors for the PMP and project managers is financial sector, IT and construction. Uh, there are few uh, project management methodologies <clears throat> And uh, uh, demand for the methodology is increasing in construction. So this is the res recent trend, especially uh, the demand increasing for the hybrid type of uh, project management methodology. So uh, initially uh, we, uh, we had the uh, classic methodology like uh, waterfall methodology in uh, different areas, uh, but uh, for the recent years it has changed and uh, right now construction is moving from classic to the hybrid uh, uh, type organizations. Of course, IT is uh, hybrid and agile. Uh, finance and healthcare. Finance is uh, mainly uh, hybrid and agile, and healthcare is using mainly uh, classic methodology. So you can see that uh, project management has a big presence in uh, construction, and probably this is the most area, interesting area for you uh, uh, for, for this uh, discussion. And the uh, construction demand for the project managers is increasing. I will also discuss uh, the, the demand for the global, because uh, we, we think uh, the global trends are also uh, interesting. 
interesting for you. So in general, in general, demand for the project managers uh, are increasing. So I will recommend to, for, to you to see two uh, surveys. One of them is a job growth and talent gap carried, out, uh, carried by the Project Management Institute. And um, it is predicted that for 2027, uh, there will be a 33% increase of uh, project managers. Uh, request demand for them. So uh, actually, it means about 200, uh, 2.2 million new jobs, new project oriented roles for the um, uh, for the uh, project uh, oriented, not only project managers, but the people who are also involved in some type of project management. It can be the cost estimation, like schedule, scheduler, or uh, it can be project controls, or procurement, or maybe commissioning or sustainment. So different roles that uh, in project management uh, exist. So um, actually for 2027, uh, uh, it is predicted that 87.7 uh, million individuals will be required for the project management oriented role. So as you see, uh, the demand for the project managers and the people involved in project management will be increasing. So uh, we can say it uh, by the uh, announcements in the um, uh, different uh, sites, recruiting sites. And I also receive uh, several uh, like uh, inquiries uh, for big companies looking for the project quality project managers. So these are some uh, job opportunities by sector. So uh, as you see, the leading uh, uh, industries, this is manufacturing and construction and information and publishing. So if we compare the data here, uh, you see that the demand is pretty significant. So uh, after information and publishing, actually manufacturing uh, and finance insurance, we have manufacturing and construction. Increase will be for 2013, pretty uh, significant. So um, uh, there will be a uh, need for uh, infrastructure spendings for um, uh, uh, getting up to speed those industries and all those infrastructure implementations and digitalization will require qualified and skilled project managers in different areas. So actually the increase that you see for 2030 uh, is pretty, um, uh, pretty significant. So um, uh, forecast, as I mentioned, for uh, 2017 will increase from 66 million to 88 million job openings. So there is pretty big demand for the project managers. So uh, I brought the demand by countries as well. Uh, where is the biggest demand by countries for the uh, people uh, managing projects, leading projects, involved in the projects? The biggest demand you can see, of course, this is China. Uh, after that, we can see that demand is pretty high in South, uh, South Asia. Uh, and we following uh, actually uh, Europe, Europe and Asia Pacific. Uh, you can see. So Europe demand for the project managers is pretty high. Uh, uh, I, I also thought it would be interesting for you to see the wages for the projectized uh, industries. So this is the data that was collected for 2017. And um, uh, as the research shows in PMI Pulse of Profession, uh, you can see that the wages for the project manager uh, management oriented occupations, it means that anybody who is involved in project management is increasing. Uh, 
So uh, for people who are occupied in non-project management uh, occupations and industries, uh, their salaries are much lower than those who are involved in the pro uh, project. So this is also probably uh, worth mentioning that the trend for Georgia probably will be the same because not uh, exactly, but somehow uh, um, uh, close. Unfortunately, uh, I wish I, I could uh, bring the data about uh, Georgia, but there is no real research or not really any um, uh, data collected uh, about the project management uh, in Georgia in different segments. So this is uh, one of the gaps we see, and this is the topic we are constantly raising and discussing uh, in uh, our board. Um, uh, Actually, I wanted to mention that the chapter is volunteer based. This is not a, uh, this is nonprofit organization and anybody uh, volunteering, including board of directors, this is completely uh, volunteering job. So this is our uh, like um, uh, giving back to society and giving back to the profession. So we, uh, we hope that there will be some uh, discussions uh, about in the future about collecting the data, what data needs to be collected about uh, about the project management profession and uh, industries, uh, how the project management is evolving, what is the maturity level of the project management for different industries. So uh, lots of topics uh, can be researched and um, like uh, surveys done uh, in different segments uh, in this uh, uh, direction. Uh, one of the topics I thought also that would be interesting, what is the salaries of the certification holders? Because I've been asked lots of times, does it really worth to take the certificate? Does it really worth to take the formal education? So uh, actually, we I wanted to show you the, the data, uh, how it is impacted and how it look likes, uh, looks like in uh, like... Um, Mm, uh, um, for example, US uh, market. So you see that uh, we have three main uh, uh, titles here. This is the project management specialist, project manager and portfolio manager. Uh, the salaries for the PMI, what we, uh, PMI uh, actually in uh, envisions the salary will be. You can see that the highest of course is the portfolio manager and the uh, specialist project management specialist uh, salary starts with 90,000. Uh, so it is pretty, uh, pretty uh, nice uh, um, uh, high, uh, number for the salary. Uh, also, what I can uh, uh, indicate is that the salary average for industries are pretty uh, high, especially for you, for this audi audience. Uh, it will be interesting to say that engineering is the highest in the salary average for the uh, PMP holders. So PMP holders are getting really uh, pretty high salaries uh, in comparison to other uh, industries. So uh, what certifications uh, are available for the beginners and for the, those who have actually some already uh, pre uh, experience in project management? Here are different certifications that are offered. Uh, PMP is the biggest and the most famous and popular uh, certification, which stands for project management professional. Uh, and it requires at least three, uh, uh, three and a half year uh, experience in project management and education, uh, 35 academic hours in project management. The next is for the uh, uh, like a basic level basic level, those who don't really have a, um, a big experience uh, in project management, only one and a half year project management experience uh, is required or uh, 24 hours of education like certification course is also acceptable. So mainly this is the, uh, for the beginners and uh, in foundation. So we also have PMI ACP, which stands for the uh, 
um, uh, agile certification, uh, also risk certification, uh, risk management professional certification, uh, also a project business analyst certification and project management certification. And recently uh, acquired uh, disciplined agile the, that will uh, actually this is the area that PMI acquired uh, during the last uh, years. This is DA, uh, uh, DASM. This is a uh, disciplined agile scrum master. And uh, another is disciplined agile senior scrum master certification. Um, so um, you can find information about those certification uh, on PMI's websites. They are uh, available openly and there are discounts for students, specifically for students. Um, we do in our chapter outreach to local schools and universities and actually we had few introduction uh, meetings about the project management in Ilya State University. Uh, as well as we do a workshop, project management workshops at the municipalities and uh, we do scenarios, project management development scenarios and it was uh, uh, quite successful just before the uh, lockdown. Um, again, Ilya State University. Um, and just recently we had online meeting with the uh, public health program participants uh, for the M MBA doctors. Uh, uh, and it was uh, really well received and um, high, there was a high interest. Actually, I wanted to say a couple words for the PMI Georgia chapter plans. We will have uh, uh, actually attendance to those those uh, meetings for volunteers is completely free and available for, for any volunteer. We plan to have thematic meetings about the discipline, the agile, about the procurement, construction, HR, PR, different thematic uh, meetings with uh, invited speakers. Also, we plan to have annual conference and educational programs. Uh, we will have the project management spot. Uh, the platform offers the, the moderated discussion among the professional in this uh, sphere. Uh, we also tend to uh, focus on the uh, PM youth uh, outreach programs, like uh, talking with the university schools and uh, having uh, like um, uh, meetings with the uh, um, uh, school and pupils in regions. And uh, we also so we'll have the pro, uh, member value edition, uh, like chapter member video creation. Why I'm discussing this? Because actually this is the good opportunity for the beginner project managers to volunteer for those activities. And it is good opportunity for them to interact with already qualified and experienced project managers. This is uh, like a good start point for the experience gaining as well as the network working. Uh, actually, this is pretty much, uh, I have almost uh, fitted in my 25 meeting, uh, 25 meetings. So uh, you are welcome to uh, ask questions. Uh, and um, I will stop sharing. This is my contact information. So we have a question, as I see, the question from Anna. Are PM certifications required for Georgian market? This is the first question. Anna, thank you for the question. Uh, there is no specific requirement for, uh, and there is no law requiring it. Uh, uh, a few years ago, about four, more than four years ago, while Barack Obama was in his presidential, uh, um, like he was a president, there was a, a presidential decree which required anybody working on the high managerial position uh, in the America US government sector requiring to have a PMP certification. Unfortunately, we don't have any requirement right now. Um, at the Georgian market, uh, but um, uh, I hope there will be uh, there, there will be some demand 
increasing demand uh, because uh, governmental sector has more and more uh, projects and they will need professional project managers uh, to manage those projects and lots of investments are going in the, into infrastructure, into education, into digitalization from the government also there will be, I, I am sure there will be demand for the uh, certificate holders. And what benefits owning a, a PMP, a PM certificate has in Georgia in terms of salary and how fitting the knowledge is to the Georgian construction sector. I can say uh, from my experience, uh, uh, PMP holders uh, right now who are in construction sector, and actually I uh, happen to know most of them, majority of them, about 80% uh, of them personally, um, their salaries, uh, their positions, first of all, their positions are uh, pretty high. And secondly, uh, their salaries uh, are pretty high and most of them are working with uh, international uh, organizations international companies. I myself worked with the Bechtel and the Jacobs, uh, CH2M Hill, and the, most of the um, uh, people who worked on those projects got jobs with the different organizations. So uh, PM certificate, of course, increases your demand. Uh, especially in construction sector, uh, uh, the best way to uh, observe that uh, demand, you can see the job openings and the job offerings at the LinkedIn and other uh, job posting recruiting sites. So, um, Nika. Nika have a question, has a question. Do we agree or disagree with the statement that the client is always right? Uh, well, we say in the project management that the customer is always right uh, because we do projects for the customer. So whatever we create, uh, we do it for the customer. So we should make the customer happy. So uh, the question is he already always right he has a right to demand whatever he wants to do because he knows what he intends, what is the goal, what is the mission of the project uh, he or she is doing. Of, of course, we should be offering the, uh, the decision or options that we believe is the right option, but the final de decision, of course, stays with the client. So if I have answered, I think uh, that the uh, client is always right, it depends. It depends and we should remember that the PM project manager always is working for the uh, customer and creating project, product, services for the customer. So, uh, do you agree? Okay, um, we have a question from Nika. Thank you, thank you Nika for your feedback. Thank you, great presentation. My question, how preferable is it to acquire a master's degree in PM? Can you recommend any programs? Um, actually, I have a master's certificate myself and I obtained it from the George Washington University. Um, there are a few uh, masters uh, uh, from uh, different universities, uh, depends on which segment you are, are you interested. Especially, I would probably recommend, of course, George Washington University, which I'm really uh, fond of, uh, and um, also the um, uh, construction segment. So construction, um, you can also look for um, universities in UK. Uh, it depends where you plan to continue work. So, uh, uh, because uh, the best, uh, which segment you plan to, to work. So um, having a master's is of course uh, additional value, but without the project manager's profession is that you need a practice and you need a certification, but certification without practice, it uh, doesn't really make sense. So uh, PMP and any certification is just a proof 
for for what you know uh, what is the um, uh, standards and methodology so the certification is good proof of your practice what you do in the practice uh, if you will have it, it's good. But uh, for example, I believe that having a PMP or PGMP or portfolio manager professional is completely sufficient as of uh, this moment. Um, unfortunately, in Georgia, we don't have any project management professional certification or uh, pro portfolio management professional certification holders, none of them. Uh, so maybe one of you will be uh, the, the pioneers for, for that. Also, there was a question that um, I would like to ask the following, is the, uh, what are the basic required knowledge and skills for the entry position in PM? It's a good question. Um, if you want to start to become a PM project manager, first you need to understand what project manager does. Project manager is responsible for um, uh, getting things done, uh, meaning that achieving result, achieving result uh, by having a complex communication, uh, coordination with stakeholders, arranging tasks and having a budget, managing budget schedule, uh, dealing with the change management. And of course, uh, one of the biggest tasks is to manage the team. So nowadays we have uh, as a physical teams uh, as well as remote teams. So it's also uh, very important to have the skill of communication with the different uh, type of uh, stakeholders. Um, so uh, you, have, you have to have a different types of skills like leadership, we mentioned communication. You need to have a negotiation skills, sales skills, public relations skills, time management skills. So um, uh, design thinking also be uh, looking at the things uh, creative way. Uh, the uh, machines right now uh, and artificial intelligence is picking up pretty much of all the routine tasks. So like, uh, schedule development, uh, uh, sending reminders, uh, sending the, the, the traditional like um, uh, invitation emails, it all will be done by AI and uh, mainly decisions, decision making skill will be required, communication skill will be required. So uh, if you want to start this um, uh, profession, First, learn what it involves. So uh, what it involves, then uh, look how you react to those skills. Do you have all of them? Do you need to reacquire those uh, skills? Um, the next will be to hang around with the uh, experienced project managers. See how uh, the question probably will be the, where I where I can hang around with those people. Like chapter uh, gives you this opportunity and it's free. Uh, I would recommend to volunteer for your organizations to uh, lead some of the projects and see if it is the right thing for you to do. Uh, so uh, it's always better to try before you decide your path to try uh, if it is uh, something that you want to do and to develop in this career. The knowledge, knowledge um, usually in most of the Georgia's universities, uh, project management is taught, uh, taught as a subject. So uh, you need to know project life cycle. You need to know how to develop project charter and project scope. You need to know how to develop uh, work breakdown structure. You need to develop work breakdown dictionary. So these are the, uh, or uh, it, um, like um, theoretical knowledge. Uh, then you need to develop, you need to know uh, how to develop project schedule, uh, what tools to use for development of those uh, uh, schedules, uh, how to develop budgets, 
and uh, what, how to coordinate team for obtaining the technical specification from the team. Uh, another topic will be for you to know how to do the risk management plan, how to do communication plan, how to develop risk, uh, responsibility matrices, uh, how to uh, manage the process of uh, changes in your project, uh, develop the uh, like uh, document uh, control center if there is no or uh, know how to deal with the documentation on your project. Uh, so um, the next step will be for, for the knowledge purposes, how to monitor and control uh, all these uh, plans. Um, you can develop plans, but if you do not monitor and control them, it is useless. If you do not incorporate changes on those plans, the plants will stay on this shelf somewhere else and you will, uh, you will be um, un, uh, over budget or uh, um, under schedule. So uh, you need those tools. Um, so I hope Nick, I answered your question. Uh, we have uh, another question. One of the main job requirements is proper email etiquette. And can you, could you highlight the main aspects and provide some examples? Um, uh, this is a good question. And uh, actually I uh, tend to receive, uh, in the past it, it was happening more. And now nowadays it's less and less. Uh, sometimes I receive the emails without subject line. So it's uh, for me, uh, email without subject line, uh, like uh, um, a person without a name and last name. So for me, the, the subject line for email is uh, name and last, email, uh, last name of the email. So uh, this is very important. Um, then I had a tendency when I received the long emails, I was beginning to read from the top and when I was going down to the email, I was forgetting what was the topic at the top, uh, at the beginning of the email. So it is, it's like nightmare. So um, the best way for the email, uh, it, is, it should be short, it should be bullet bulletized and uh, you have to uh, indicate to the reader uh, what you want from the reader. Sometimes I was reading emails that I would go through the email, go to the bottom and I could not really understand what I was requested to do. What I have to do, is this for just for my information? Is this for my action? Is this for just uh, involving being in the loop for some action? So it was so hard for me to understand. So when you send email, please always indicate from uh, the person in two line that what you're requesting from him or her. So is what action is required from that person? Um, so probably these are the top recommendations from my side please avoid writing long emails uh, because if the email is two, three paragraph or more than two, three paragraph, short paragraphs, then it's hard to digest. And it's always to arrange quick meeting to explain things, uh, not meeting, you can do it online. Sometimes not all the topics require the meetings. They're having a long, uh, all day long meetings. It's also uh, very um, irritating and uh, tiring. So email should be as concise as possible and the reader should understand what is required from him or her. Uh, So we have a questions from live streaming as well. How to start connecting to other professionals in these fields? Um, my recommendation will be find social media groups. 
uh, we have different groups about the project management, about agile, about product management, and uh, all the professionals, because they want to develop as well. And uh, we as a professionals develop by sharing our experience, uh, sharing the lessons learned, uh, and uh, what are the new tools, and what is the experience other project managers, product owners, or scrum masters uh, have. So uh, please find those groups. Uh, they are available, they are uh, free to enter, and any questions related to this, uh, I, I'm sure it will, they will be answered. Then um, you can, for project management specifically, I would recommend to volunteer uh, for the PMI chapter. So you will have an opportunity to meet uh, all the PMP holders in Georgia. Uh, especially we have annual meetings, conference, when uh, we invite our um, volunteers. Besides, you can volunteer for any of the projects uh, I have uh, presented and you will have a chance to network with them, to know what tools they are using and to get to know each other. So um, this will be a good opportunity. Uh, besides that, at universities, you have a good uh, um, uh, opportunity to do projects, different projects, and um, to uh, use those tools and instruments which you learn in your projects. So this will be another uh, good way to network. Um, uh, another good network uh, opportunity will be mentorship. Uh, mentorship was not really popular and was not really culture of Georgia, but it becomes more and more popular. Uh, and I am sure uh, if you reach um, project managers and request them to be a mentor, they may consider this. For example, uh, currently I have two mentees. I work with them uh, once in a month. We have a meeting to discuss their career opportunities and to discuss how they want to develop. So uh, this is also a good chance for you to network. Mentor usually recommends uh, or introduces you the different uh, um, uh, people they have in their network. So uh, if you will have a mentor, you will have a uh, person uh, who has its network and it, this network is available for you. So this is also a good opportunity for you. Um, another question. Thank you for very much for the presentation. I want to know uh, what are the obstacles women face in today's Georgian market as project managers and which approach is the best to overcome those issues? So um, this is a good question. Um, myself, I have experience working in construction, uh, several construction uh, projects. Um, there are some superstitions as well as subjective view of the project manager uh, in construction, especially. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that um, at least right now, I know uh, five very successful uh, project manager women in construction. They are very reputable and successful in their field. Uh, of course, it was not easy, but um, this can be overcome by consistent work, uh, development, and uh, well, I, I can say the education, of course. You have to know, have the knowledge and then you have to apply this knowledge. Of course, these certifications usually help, uh, but um, uh, working uh, with the team, uh, especially if you will have experience managing one second, then you build the reputation and uh, this is the way to, to go. Um, this is uh, hard, but achievable. Okay, thank you. For, uh, thank you for such a valuable uh, session. Can a volunteer of your chapter collect the hours of project management education PD use? Yes, 
yes, uh, this was the question. Uh, actually, for those who don't know, uh, for example, if you are a PMP holder or if you are uh, uh, other certification holders, uh, you will need to have a professional development unit collected uh, throughout the period. For PMP, it's three years. Uh, professional development unit is given to a person who can prove that uh, he or she has um, worked in projects, managing the projects, uh, has obtained uh, uh, education, additional education, uh, attended trainings, attended workshops, attended different seminars, or can be um, giving the lectures like uh, working uh, as a volunteer in project management area um, or reading books or attending online uh, webinars. So anything that contributes to, to professional development can be considered as a, as a PDU. Uh, volunteer can collect chapter volunteer can collect PDUs by participating on those uh, projects that I mentioned earlier, as well as, um, uh, uh, for example, uh, give free uh, master classes. All those can convert in PDUs or attend into the events organized by the chapter. For example, if you attend the, the, one of the um, uh, events, uh, recently we had an uh, event with the Georgia and Kazakhstan chapters, uh, and it was like a Georgia-Kazakhstan bridge where the project managers for each country uh, talked about the challenges and opportunities in each country, uh, about the, uh, the big projects ongoing in each country. And if you attend those meetings, uh, you will be granted PDUs. Uh, technically, uh, you will be given the code for attendance of those events. Uh, you will uh, obtain this code and uh, claim uh, on your personal dashboard for PMI for the PDU. Uh, if you will have a question, further question for obtaining PDUs, if you are CAPM or um, ACP, PMI, ACP, or any other uh, certification holder, please contact us. Uh, we are uh, we can be reachable uh, at the Facebook uh, page uh, as well as on LinkedIn, and we will guide you through. Uh, the, we are available for um, uh, consultation. So we have question from Nini Giorgadze. Nini, hello. Hi, is it essential to have a social media account and from your experience, how relevant is it in today's Georgian market? Actually in Georgia, uh, social media is very active and pretty used, uh, pretty much used. It is used for the business and it is used for the networking, uh, so different purposes. Um, in Georgia, in, uh, uh, from my experience uh, abroad, it is, uh, Facebook is more personal. So on Facebook, business is not really done on Facebook. So for business, uh, for project manager, uh, I think it will be good to have a social media to interact with the professionals, uh, to, to network with other um, professionals in this area. So um, I see the future um, that there will be need for the social media uh, for project managers. I have, we have a question from David Kakachishvili. David, hello. The question is why Georgian construction sector does not use Adobe Primavera 6, good question, and when the demand on this software will arise. David, Primavera 6 is very expensive tool. Uh, right now, the demand is uh, increasing uh, for the MS project. MS project is a tool for schedule um, uh, development. Uh, Primavera is much expensive and we do not really have experienced people uh, in Georgia who are qualified people who can use Primavera. 
though uh, P6 is one of the best tools, I would say, for the schedule development. In Georgia, uh, MS Project is most uh, the popular uh, instrument for, for this. Uh, we have recently project managers in Georgia, of course, uh, using different uh, tools like Jira, Asana, Trello, and so on and so on uh, for different purposes, because it can be for the planning purposes, for communication purposes like Slack. Uh, you can, it's pretty popular. Um, there are WhatsApp and Viber used for this as well. So um, those tools can be used, uh, but uh, Primavera, um, not much organizations, Georgian uh, organizations can afford it. Uh, even more, the, there are no tools, uh, no tools for the um, estimation. So uh, most of the Georgian companies in construction area, uh, they do the estimations uh, either manually or partially automatically. So uh, manual estimation, uh, this is a risk for the uh, errors. Of course, we all know that. But unfortunately, there is not a really big uh, choice of uh, the full automation um, uh, automation tools. For example, in Oracle, there is specific uh, automation tools for the construction uh, estimation. But again, um, it all comes down to the cost and the capa and um, uh, capacity to manage those. So these are the, the actually uh, obstacles I see right now at the Georgian market. Uh, I think I have answered the questions and I'm reaching almost, uh, I have exceeded the, the time. Uh, we thought that initially it would be 15 minutes. So I have exceeded my limits and um, I'm glad that I have, uh, I had, uh, I have uh, this opportunity to talk about the project management and uh, feel free to contact us at the PMI chapter or contact me personally. I'm always open to the questions and you can subscribe to uh, our PMI uh, chapter, Facebook uh, and LinkedIn. You can subscribe my personal channel as well. So I will be happy to guide you, consult you or give you any advice uh, in your career or uh, give you an opportunity to network with the project managers in construction or in any other uh, sectors. Thank you for having me. I will stop sharing. Thank you Tika and Anna for inviting me for this session. Thank you very much for this interesting and informative You're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, good luck to your club. Thank you to all who attended the, the live streaming and wish you the success in your projects. Uh, like we come to